Hey there, welcome back. Today we're looking at the concept of interpersonal attraction. And this, I think, will help explain to you why and how you ended up being friends with the people you're friends with and in relationships with the people you are connected with. It's a little big mystery to a lot of people. How do you make friends? How do you get in relationships? Well, these four variables will help explain why. And as usual for this sequence, I'm working out of BB and Masterson's book on communicating in small groups. I will put a link to that in the description below. So let's get into it. So there are four main variables that determine or predict, if you will, whether or not you will meet people and become friends with those people. In fact, this is what you might describe as, a, as, as like a prediction. So earlier in another video, we talked about the predictive function of theories. And I could predict the people or guess the people that you have become friends with and how you begin to connect with them. It's very likely that you can check most of these four boxes. So what I'd like you to do is think of a particular friendship that you can keep in mind as we look at these four variables and see how many of them line up. Because at the end of the video, I'm gonna ask you to make a comment about that in the description below the video. So the first way that we are attracted to other people, and we'll put this word attraction in quotes because it just means how you gravitate toward certain people. It doesn't have to be romantic attraction, but it could be. And the first variable is similarity. We are connected and feel connected to people who have the similar kinds of attitudes, beliefs, values, and interest in similar activities as we do. When you have those things in common, you might say, you tend to find it easier to get along with people. It's very difficult to find people who have different attitudes, beliefs, values, and don't like any of your activities. It's difficult to find that person attractive. And that idea of common ground and similarity is a huge binding factor in a lot of relationships. It simplifies you know, almost everything because you tend to see the world and enjoy the world in the same way. So the other side of the coin though is complementarity. Some people say opposites attract. And that is true in a limited way. It's much more true that people who are similar attract, but sometimes opposites attract, especially when we see in the other person qualities that we lack, desire, or admire. So this is frequently the case where sometimes in a friendship, one person will be more extroverted and the other will be more introverted. So one person is more talkative, the other person might tend to listen more. That's a complementary arrangement. So it's not the same as complementary. You see this in romantic relationships as well. One person might be good with money, the other person wants to be better with money. Uh, when I met my wife, believe it or not, she had a list that she prepared before we, years before we ever met of qualities that she was looking for in another person, in a potential future husband, for example. No pressure on me, but she showed me the list and many of the things were things that she wanted that she wanted to share with that person, things in common, but other things on the list were things that she didn't have that she wanted to get better at. Those are the complementary kinds of qualities. The third is proximity, contact, and interaction. The bottom line is that you become friends with and you get attracted to people when you're around them. There's, it's very hard to maintain long distance relationships and even long distance friendships when you're not together. Proximity just means close. You have to be in regular contact if you, to create a relationship. And in fact, some people say, well, what about an online relationship? Sometimes those start that way, but really what seals it, what makes it official, the turning point is when you finally start hanging out face to face, when you're close together, in contact, interacting. And this is why when you are in class with people in high school, college, or other places, when you are working alongside people, when you're in some of the same clubs with people, when you're in the same neighborhood or area as people, when you have roommates, those are the people you end up becoming friends with because they're close to you, they're around you, you have daily contact. And through that interaction, you get to know the things you have in common. You might even go through some shared experiences that bind you. Very difficult to make friends when you don't have that number three. And number four, physical attractiveness. And this is at least at first. I mean, it's the whole reason why I tried to talk to my wife the first time. I never had met her, but I found her a little attractive 
I'll be honest. And I said, okay, you know, I took a deep breath and I tried to go up and talk to her. It didn't work out that well in that first conversation, but I tried. Um, there's another side to this though, uh, physical attraction. It does not necessarily have to be romantic attraction. So check my thinking here. I have often noticed that in my classes, for example, and in my circles of friends, that people that sort of look similar have a bond. So like if I show up and I used to be in a rock band and I was like this heavy metal guy and I had the look, you could say, of that kind of interest, someone else that's in class that's dressed like that and sending off those signals might notice me and we might walk up to each other after class and be like, hey, I noticed you're in Metallica shirt. You, you into heavy metal, right? There is an attraction there based upon similarity. So there's tall people might hang out, short people might hang out, it's a, people of the same race might hang out because there's something that we recognize as familiar in the other person. And in a non-romantic way, you could translate that as an attraction, so to speak, put it in quotes. So those are the four factors that most often contribute to interpersonal attraction. It's probably why you became friends with some of the people you're friends with. So question of the day, that friendship that you thought about earlier at the beginning of the video, I asked you to think of a friend. How many of these four boxes does that friendship check off? How many of these things can you say, yeah, we're similar, but also complementary in other ways. We have a lot of time together in proximity, and there is a kind of either physical attractiveness or physical similarity between you. I would love to hear how those results turn out in that comment section below the video. And I look forward to reading those comments. Okay, thanks, and I will see you soon.